Hello and welcome back to my channel, I'm Show Wizard. I'm going to do a tutorial or a video how to with prefabs. <clears throat> this is something I got asked the other day about prefab buildings and what functions they can come with and how do we get them to have functions, give them functions, whatever. So what I want to look at is some different prefab buildings that are quite literally just that they have no functions whatsoever um, as they are they're just there for decorative purposes or to be given functions with whatever purpose you decide so I've got um, a couple of different ones here a grain storage prefab a grain dryer and also a giants extra pack I believe this is giants prefab add-on kit uh, with some different parts in there. So what I want to do is try and uh, basically create some kind of grain dryer. Um, obviously I have the building to model everything around, but as it stands, this particular building doesn't have any functions of any kind. It is just literally a building with which looks really, really good, but it doesn't do anything. Um, you know, it has no particular functions at the moment. So what I want to do is try and put something together around this building uh, or with this building so that it will actually work. It can be used um, to then potentially, you know, uh, give some functionality to it and then dry my grain. And you could then potentially go and sell that for a profit or um, if you wanted to continually build up on it and then have uh, maybe flour mills or something like that. So you take your dry grain to your flour mill. And then have a bread factory and so on and so on but uh, one step at a time we're just going to have a look at what we can do with this particular building and uh, perhaps maybe make some things rotate and move and do all sorts of different different magical things so <clears throat> obviously we have the actual building here but at the moment like I say it's just a building with some parts in it but it doesn't do anything so what I want to do is base all of this around the M company uh, script set up uh, no particular reason other than the fact that maybe I want to apply the M company graphic and if I go with fabric script then I won't be able to do that so I tend to go with the M company just in case I choose to uh, you know either go with M company graphic right from the get-go or I want to add it later on whereas if I choose the fabric script I'm kind of stuck with that and I have no way to go other than converting it over to M Company at some point, but you know, if I start with M Company, it just saves me a lot of messing around later on. So, what I would probably suggest is to actually find a mod, whether it be Fabric Script or M Company, and then take what you need from there. Because to actually create it from scratch and build up all of the user attributes is very time consuming. By all means, you can do that. I've done it myself many times, and you know learning how all of the different user attributes work it is quite a um, a good way to learn all of those parts what each one of them actually does whether it be a float a string um, an integer or whatever else but for the video here i'm going to just you know take a bit of a shortcut so i can uh, get through it a little bit quicker than going through that process so i would find something i'm just going to use this particular mod because i have it handy seed master placeable and i'm going to then just basically take the parts from here that i can then build everything around so i don't really want the uh seed master obviously so i'm going to delete all of the parts from here that i don't want to bring into the new mod that i'm going to put together so um i'm just going to come into the visual part here and then literally just highlight the parts that i actually want to get rid of and keep the other parts now I want to keep the ground plate just simply because it gives me something to base everything on so I can get everything at the same height and whatever else it's not clipping into other objects and whatever else um, just makes it a little easier to work with it may stay it may go just depends again um, which road I go down uh, now I'm going to do this as a giant center import uh, once it's completed uh, not a placeable but there's that option as well you could create as a placeable if you wanted to go down that road so i'm just going to highlight all of those parts and delete them um, and then there's some other parts you know i don't need to do like with the doors i don't want those 
we have some sounds and shaders. I don't need any of these. Um, so I'm going to get rid of all of those and just delete them. And then we have some inputs. I only want one input, even though it's going to have multiple uh, fill types, it's only going to have the one input. So I don't need the second one, so I can get rid of that straight away. And then also this has a fill plane, movable fill plane. I may apply a fill plane to it but because of the scaling on this particular one if I try and get it scaled down to the size I'm going to be working with it will distort the texture to the point where it just becomes uh, really bad so I don't want to do that so I may create my own and then perhaps maybe go down that road decide I don't know yet I haven't decided so I'm going to get rid of that one as well uh, we'll get rid of that display because that's not relevant either and then again with the outputs I don't need the heap uh, so I can get rid of that and like I say when you're uh, obviously creating all of this stuff from scratch I would have to go through every single one of these create all the user attributes um, and there are quite a few of them uh, you know you have a couple of strings there's a uh, probably um, well I'd imagine that's more than likely going to be a string actually but it looks like it's been set up as a float but that's okay that would work just the same and then you have some other parts there um, and then you have an integer string string there's loads of different ones and then when you get down to your silo trigger there's absolutely you know there's loads and loads in here so to try and create all of those um, while I'm recording would just take me far too long so just taking the stuff from a different you know another mod and then just adapting it to what I want it to do at least for the video is the best way to go um, and hopefully you can follow along much easier with this than me trying to explain every single one of these and what they do and all the rest of it uh, in the video. But anyway, so I have got what I want here, um, I believe. So what I'm going to do is actually export this out. Now I've deleted all of the other uh, parts. And I'm going to do that because obviously this particular mod has all of these textures which are no longer going to be necessary for the mod that I'm going to put together with the prefab buildings so I don't want any extra textures that are irrelevant to that setup so by doing an export I'm just going to end up with only what I need and nothing more so I'm going to go export all with files I'll go to my desktop I'm going to create a new folder here and I'm just going to call this grain dryer because that's what I'm kind of basing this on uh, like so and I'll copy the name from there and then we'll open up this folder paste in the name for the i3d and save I'll keep the parent directory structure for now because I'm going to rearrange all of that in a minute anyway I don't need to save any of this because um, I've got my own version of it now my own parts that I'm going to work with so to keep this intact as it was before I'm just going to close it down and click no I do not want to save okay so now I have my own, if you like, um, setup around the Fabric Script mod, but I can actually adapt that to work with M Company fairly easily. So I'm going to go into here and take the textures from that particular folder because I don't want it to be in that one. I just want it to be in my textures folder here and paste that into there. I can then go ahead and delete that folder. And I'm going to just open up the i3d here in Notepad++. Uh, any other text editor will do just the same I would imagine and I'm just going to delete that part there like so to correct the path file name to that particular folder and we'll just open it up to make sure that there are no errors in the console and everything is exactly where it needs to be fantastic so now that I have the basic kind of um, trigger set up for all of the parts I'm going to need to work with uh, I don't need to work with the prefab buildings to obviously put it all together so I've got the grain dryer here this is the prefab so if I just open this up I'm going to take just the actual building itself none of the attachments at the moment because this has some decals uh, some fans and various other things I don't want all of that just yet because I'm hoping that I can actually get these fans to rotate because at the moment they don't do anything they're just static fans but um, I like the idea that the author of this particular mod has put them in as 
separate objects so that they can actually have a function applied to them if necessary or if required. So I'm just going to take the actual visual building because if we click on the main one it has this big um, collision box all around it which would restrict access to the actual building somewhat uh, because it's collidable it's actually got a collision and if I actually click off the non-renderable it's just one big kind of blocky cube so I don't want that in my my uh, my new setup so I'm just going to take the grain dryer viz and I'm going to then copy that the name from there and I'm going to export selection with files I'm going to go to my new folder here paste in the name and I'm just going to go save and keep the parent directory structure and I can close that one down for now now it's important when you look at when you actually do this to look at what the folder structures are because all of these match up which is why I took the textures from the other folder and put them within the textures folder like so is to keep it all together uh, if I was to take this out and this was some other setup when it was when it exported it all into this folder then I would have several different uh, path file names so I would have to adjust them but because it matches it's perfectly fine to my structure I've got here but just be careful when you're exporting it out what kind of folder structure is set up because it may be slightly different so a lot of adaptions there in the i3d might be required but we're good to go there so I've got that one and then what I'm going to do while I'm actually here I'm going to take some of these other parts so if I extract this one out and this is the grain storage again a prefab no functions it's just a a model that can be applied to the map and then the functions are given to it as we are doing in the video here so we have a storage grain storage unit some pipe work and an auger of some kind there a hopper or whatever you want to call that so um, again it depends on what you want to do here you could literally just copy the whole thing over because it's again the same kind of setup some changes might need to be made uh, because it has shaders a shader within the texture folder so I would prefer to put it in a separate folder but that's fine so what I'd probably do here is just take the textures folder and the i3d and i3d shapes and literally just copy it over into my folder and then merge everything together because I want to keep the structure of that mod together all in one so that's fine and then I will probably just take the shader from there and cut it and put it into that folder and I can then open this up and change the path file name uh, accordingly so I could just go into here and type in shaders like so and then save that and just open it up to make sure that it all is still showing everything correctly and we do have some um, errors here because I haven't got the dirt normal set up correctly I think uh, so if I go into here vehicle shader uh, so what I want to do there is go dot dot slash shared slash because my um, dirt normal is in the shared folder so what I have to do is give it that path file name in the actual shader itself to point it in the right place so I can go ahead and close that down and save it and then just double check it again make sure that there are no errors so come back into here open it in the giant server again no errors fantastic it's always worth just checking that before you start importing everything into one you know importing one i3d into another object or a giant server session because once it's in there and the errors are logged it's much harder to rearrange and sort stuff out once your i3d gets gets full up with file names and things like that much easier to just do it before you get that far okay so now that i have that set up um I may not actually work with the add-on kit in this particular case just to try and keep things a little bit simpler I think um, I've done this a couple times just to see what it could put together here and I used all three of those setups but um, it's going to take me a while to rearrange I think uh, I suppose it could do some sort of time lapse uh, what the hell let's just do it so if I extract this one as well then this one's going to be a little bit different because I don't want to bring all of the uh, packing I just want some parts of it so if I open this up in its own giant to session here I'm just going to have a look through here and see what we've got 
and then just take what I want and leave everything else behind. So I'm going to take the aircon unit there. You know, we've got a couple of electrical boxes, so I'm going to hold my left control down so I can select multiple objects. So I want that one um, electrical box wires, and what else do I want here? That one, I, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go with just those. So in this case, I'm going to go file export selection with files. Make sure I'm in my grain drive folder and I'm just going to type in here add ons and we'll do OK. And I'll keep the parent directory structure again because of the way this folder structure is set up. It's keeping to the same structure I've got for the model I'm putting together here. So it's all going to end up in the one textures folder, which is what I want it to be. OK, so now that I have all of that together there, I'm just going to go ahead and open up the um, grain dryer that I'm putting together and I spelt it the way I spelt it so I can actually um, recognize which one is the one I want to look at so I don't open the wrong one every time uh, so I'm going to open up this one here which is just the um, setup for the fabric script and you can see that in the user attribute here on create fabric script so what I want to do is basically just build all the parts up within this this setup and then move the triggers to the appropriate places. So what I'm going to do then is under the viz, I don't want it to be um, seed master. So I'm just going to change this to grain dryer. I'm going to spell it like that so I know that uh, it's my one that I'm putting together here. Um, we keep that. So what I'm going to do then is go file import um, and you can just bring all of them in or one at a time, whatever. So I'm going to bring in the grain dryer first so I can get a, a good idea of the position and everything. And I'm going to actually re-zero all of that out like so. Um, let's close that down for now. That's fine. And I'm going to then cut this control X, click on the viz, transform group control V and put that in there like so. Now, because I've put it there, this has a scaling against it. So it's going to make the building really small. So you have to be a bit careful with that. It's up to you, you know, that you can make the building much smaller, depending on the area that you're going to put it into and all the rest of it. Uh, I don't particularly like scaling on transform groups. I prefer to scale everything individually. Sometimes you have to, there's no way of getting around it. Uh, but uh, I prefer to scale the objects individually. Like this has got its own individual scaling. Um, but it's, so in this particular case, this plate, base plate is being scaled twice. It's being scaled once by the actual transform group and then again by itself, which, you know, with its own scaling. So it's been scaled down by the transform group and then scaled back up again um, on its own attributes, which is, just seems a little bit weird to me. So uh, anyway, irregardless, I'm going to actually set all of these back to one, one and one like so. So now the building is back to its original state. Um, and the scaling on the plate is fine, I can go with that. But we have now set all of this scaling back to what it, I believe it should be in the first place. So um, I'm going to actually increase the scaling slightly on the base plate here. So I'm just going to grab that. And I'm just going to drag out and scale this up a little bit to give me a bit more room to work with on the plate. Maybe not quite that big, but big enough. I can also always make it bigger or smaller as I need to. Um, once I start bringing in other objects and you know you may need to perhaps maybe position this depending on where you want to put all the parts to it um, I'm probably going to build everything on the right hand side here so I may not need such a large open area on the left of the building when I'm looking at it from this direction so I potentially would bring the base plate over to perhaps maybe somewhere like that so that I can then build up on this side uh, without having like I say, this big open space on the left. And it all will depend on your positioning when you're going to put it in the map. Um, you know, how it will fit in with other objects on the map and whatever else. So, uh, you know, every time you do or I do something like this, I can only do it to the way I would put it together. When you put it into your map or whatever you're going to do, you potentially will choose to do it slightly different to me. So I uh, just have to work with that. I'm just going to get this somewhere 
at the bottom of the building there something like that that'll be fine just so I can get everything at the same kind of leveling at the same height ground height or whatever else so it all looks good uh, and not clipping into various areas and whatever okay so next thing then uh, is to obviously bring in all the other parts so uh, I'm just going to go file import and I'll bring in the grain storage I'm going to go control X to cut that grain viz transform group control V and I can just bring this out as one and again you know you can just manipulate this and put it where you need to put it um, for the correct height and whatever you and then rotate it and do whatever you need to do there so if I rotate that uh, by minus 90 something like that and then I'll bring it in closer to the actual building here don't want it to be too far away just you know the idea is that the grain will go into here through the hopper system this auger kind of system here uh, go in through there come out through the pipe work here go up through the unit and then come down here as it comes down the through the unit the fans here blow the air through dry it all out and the my, way I'm going to put this this exhauster fan over here will take the actual dust away from there so I'll put some particle systems and whatever there and then it will come back down and come out through here into this particular unit and then we collect it from the pipe here that's the idea anyway so again this might need to be raised and lowered uh, independently uh, depending on the size of the equipment you're going to put underneath it uh, might be too too low uh, as it was before so you know it gives you on this particular unit it gives you a good bit of uh, room to play with again on the uh, on the model there so that's nice so again that's something you're going to have to mess around with and get it somewhere about where you want it to be depending if you're going to use the same same setup as i'm using uh, and then we're just going to um, bring in the add-on kit as well so if i choose to use it i haven't decided yet so if we do that bring in the add-on kit as well this is obviously made up of a few different units so we'll just select all of those Control x click on the transform group again for the grain dryer viz Control v and then we can move all of these independently to wherever we want them to be so i might perhaps maybe have like um some kind of setup over here for this again this would potentially just be decorative wouldn't per serve a purpose but uh, it might um, add something to the mod um, so let's do uh, 180 something like that maybe and I can put that back in amongst all of this stuff in here like so and then just put that something like that and then have the wall mount electrical box over here so if I rotate that 90 put that up against the wall like so Um, and then you know you can just go from there so uh, perhaps maybe this one uh, what's that that's the electrical connections and then we have this one so might maybe put that somewhere out here just depends really uh, so let's do 90 maybe put that somewhere out here like that maybe just to give it a bit of a decorative feel you know it's actually there for a reason and doing something uh, and then maybe have uh, some electrical connections going into some places so we can do 90 on that one and then let's 
Let's do something like that and then put that up against there like that. Something like that maybe. So all of these different things, we have the wall mount for electric going into the building perhaps maybe and then this electrical box supplies the electric to other parts out here and then we can take uh, the parts for this so if I go to this one and then bring this out like so and then maybe put that something like that like so and then take that control D to make a duplication of it uh, and then rotate it again bring it over to my auger here and then do like so so we have some sort of electrical power going to that as well and then we can take uh, let's see this one like so might make it a little bit let's take this one and position this I'm probably not going to get it 100% perfect for this just going to put it into roughly a place we'll do something like that I'll take this one um, and then apply that to the end of there. So if I come around this way, I'll use the interactive placement tool to get it closer and then just manipulate it as I need to. Something like that will be fine. And then perhaps maybe I can take the one meter and make a duplication of that and let's rotate this whoops 90 put that up to there something like that and then we'll take one of the bends again so this one control d rotate that and Minus 90. Something like that will do. Uh, might move it over just a little bit. Let's move it all over this way just a tad. Something like that. And then... Um, Take the three meter, rotate that, 90, come into here, and do like that, perfect. And then, you know, just go from there, so you can duplicate that one, and drag it out, to something like that, and then perhaps maybe uh, let's see, 2 meter, let's uh, rotate that by 90, put that somewhere like that, that's not too bad, that'll do, and then maybe, uh, let's see, maybe a 1 meter, so if I take another 1 meter, so I'll make a duplication of that one and then rotate that bring that up bring it out something like that maybe scale it down just a little bit so it uh, meets in the wall nicely Something like that. Maybe a little bit more. Oops. Difficult to actually 
see that's uh, there we go that's better something like that and then you know you've got this uh, kind of clamp piece here which you can put around all of the joints I won't do that because that's going to take far too long to position all of those um, but uh, the idea is you know you can put all your parts all the parts in uh, wherever you feel you need to put them uh, to to kind of build up the um, the unit that you want to put together so that's about half an hour I've been doing that now so what I'm going to do is I'll end it here and then I'll pick it up in part two where we start I actually move all the triggers into the appropriate places um, and start to actually put the functional parts of the mod together uh, and start renaming some areas in the scene graph here and joining all the user attributes together for the actual script and whatever else so thanks very much for watching i'm show wizard and i'll catch you on the next one